Hello YouTube friends. I swear she was asleep two minutes ago. She doesn't need me to say hello YouTube friends anymore. She just needs me to set the camera up. She was asleep over there on the windowsill and here she is now. So we're going to have a tussle with you now, aren't we, missus? Yeah. Sunglasses on then, guys, because I'll explain what this is behind me here. I finished the quilt I was making, uh, quilting last Sunday when I was chatting to you. And I finished the quilt that was a little bit delayed for the January quilt. So there's, there's been two commission quilts that I've been wanting to finish. And I just finished the February commission quilt just inside February. <laughs> now, I haven't got another commission quilt for a couple of months, but in tidying up, I did a massive tidy up of all of my table and my sewing machine area and all, you know how you make a big old mess when you're quilting, when you're doing anything creative. And then at the end of it all, for me, this is how I work. I put it all away at the end and have a big tidy up. So I had a big tidying up day uh, after the last, uh, I've put the last stitch in the last quilt. It's going to be on its way to its new owner tomorrow and I'll wait until she sends me some photographs if she wants to before I share them all with you because I haven't got any photographs of it, bizarrely. <laughs> I mean, I've got little snaps here and there, same with the the, the, the other quilt uh, that went out in for January. I don't show you those until the person's got them. This one, however, I'll talk about this one. It's all the orphan blocks from a previous quilt I made last year. Uh, these are all uh, Kafer set jelly rolls and I made this trip around the world quilt for a customer. Uh, it's gone, but there were a load of orphan uh, pieces, bits and pieces that were left over and they were just hanging around. And um, if I hadn't done something with them, they just would have stayed in a big pile. So this quilt isn't for anyone uh, yet. Uh, I've finished all the... Half of it was... Um, in blocks like this. Half of it was made and then there was lots of bits and pieces. This is the trip around the world block. That's one block there, the 12 inch block. Let's pop that back. And then there were enough uh, part made blocks to finish this as a 60 inch square quilt. So I'm going to. I'm going to do that, not in a hurry because it's for no one. Just whenever I feel like getting a little bit of uh, sewing on the go. I sometimes like to sew uh, and mess about with fabric. So if I'm in that kind of mood, I'll put the, a film on or some good music or a podcast or something like that. And then I will um, have some sewing to do. We've got competition, Norma. Prudence is here. <laughs> Prudence. Oh dear, I'm going to have to do a lot of editing, aren't I? Give us a break. I'll just sit here and drink my water for a bit. This then is uh, a bonus quilt. These are all the bonus blocks that were left behind from having loads of other um, bits and pieces of uh, the same kind of fabric lying around. So uh, I had to break into a new jelly roll, but that's OK, because I want to finish it. I ordered the backing for it this morning, which is bright yellow and it's going to be the most sunshiny quilt ever, this one. Uh, but as I say, this is no there's no hurry for making this one. There's no reason for making this one at all. So what I wanted to talk to you about today then, uh, because I've been wanting to finish the commission quilt so that I could get my hands on some paper and start doing some books and so that's what I'm going to talk about today uh, if I can because of cats so please go there we go now I'll try and remember I never do remember do I to put a link up here to some of the to maybe what I know what I'll do I'll put a link to the books playlist because I have a book binding playlist that's the best way to do that, is to put a playlist up there so that if you're interested in a Japanese stab binding or journal making or any of those things, uh, it'll be up there in that playlist. If I point to it often enough, then maybe it'll remind me to do it. I'm terrible at putting iCards up there. 
but I'll have a go. Now, the uh, one of the book forms I really like to make is Coptic bound books. And they are, uh, they're quite tricky. And I'm not offering this as a tutorial. I just want to talk to you about Coptic bound books. Uh, they have an exposed spine with stitching on the, uh, so that you can see the stitching. And the, the beautiful thing about them is they open flat. So they're really good to use as a sketchbook. In fact, I'm going to go and get one. So this is a Coptic bound book and this is what I mean about it having an exposed spine uh, so that when you open this up and this has got watercolour pages in it, so it's, it would make a good sketchbook. It opens flat so that you could do a big landscape or a, a cityscape or whatever you wanted to draw in there. And also you can um, write loads in it if writing's your thing. You can use it that way or use it any way you like. This has got lovely budges on the paper. This one is the last one left over from when I used to make these to sell. I don't I don't make them to sell anymore and I don't think I will anytime soon. Um, not really, but I do want to make some more books. These ones here are little tiny. These are the ones that are left over from little tiny books. There's the exposed spine there. And this one, uh, and I have a few of these and then some smaller ones here that are, have got the pages of um, a fantastic illustrated dictionary that I used for these pages. So these are the few that I have left over from when I used to have these in the shop. Um, just three of those. I don't know. Maybe I'll put them in the shop if people are interested. Two of the fatter ones, which are, have got lovely black and white sort of arty paper on them. And then this one's the budges. However, I want to show you a Coptic bound book that I made. And I'm surprised to know how long ago I made this because I thought it was like a couple of years ago. But I'll get it, it's here. My parents were married uh, in, um, what well, it says it here, in 1944. And my mum died two years ago, three days before their 73rd wedding anniversary. So when it was their 70th wedding anniversary, we had a big party and uh, it was a surprise party. They knew we were going to do something, but they didn't quite know the scale of it. And people came from all over the country and even uh, my brother came from France and people came from all over. And we had um, a big surprise party for their 70th wedding anniversary and it was lovely. All the family came from all the corners that they live in and lots of friends and uh, and so on. It was really, really nice. Now, I wanted to make a special something that would uh, commemorate uh, their 70th wedding anniversary, but also be a thing for the people who couldn't come. Uh, some people uh, either live too far away or for whatever reason couldn't make it on the day that we did this. It was in the middle of December. And... Um, so I made this book. Now, this is another Coptic bound book with these exposed, uh, this exposed spine here and these very colourful pages here. But uh, and this cover is my daughter Martha painted. And these were the yellow chrysanthemums that the bridesmaids wore, uh, carried. And my mum had white chrysanthemums because it was December. But inside this book, then this book, it, they're not pages here they're all envelopes and so what I did here was I wrote to well what I actually did was I photographed every single page in their address book <laughs> I also know quite a lot of these people and you know my mum was in the quilting um the uh, uh, society near where she lives and there's quite a lot of those people in here so basically it's all the people I could find that I knew would either be there or more likely would not be there so that I sent them all an envelope 
with instructions on how to send something and the the idea behind it was that the envelope had to be this size envelope so that then I could bind it into this book and that's what I did and the way that I did that was um let's see if I can show you um let, yeah this will do this will illustrate it because there's two here so let's say that was an envelope and that was an envelope now I needed it to have a fold here because this is just a, an ordinary envelope and so I, the reason why the pages are colourful like this is that I stuck two envelopes together with a different colour of washi tape so that then the envelopes would be a fold. Do you get what I mean? Because then I had to use that fold to do the, um, to do the binding. And that's why the, the spine's so colourful. It's fun, isn't it? And all the envelopes were sealed up. I didn't open them. When I got them back from people, um, they were all completely sealed up so that my mum and dad, over the next days after their party, they could open them up and see um, what uh, people had sent them. So, so there were family members and, and some people had sent cards that they'd made and I made a bag as well to put it in which is somewhere floating around here it's just a little canvas bag that it sits in but I'm going to offer that to you as a as an idea for uh, something that you might do for a special birthday a special event a 70th wedding anniversary there aren't too many of those are there but I'm now going to be making these Coptic bound books oh. and over the next uh, few weeks then we will be making those books here as well as doing some sewing <laughs> uh, and whatever else I fancy doing. Today is the 1st of March and I have lived in this house for 34 years today which is rather marvellous. But I want So this week I actually went down to see my dad with my daughter and her baby um, my dad has never met little baby Agnes. And so Martha and Agnes and I drove down to visit my dad. It's a long way uh, and it's a long way to do it there and back in a day, I tell you, it really is. Uh, but Martha was, a, was adamant that we were going to do that. And we had a really lovely time and my dad was thrilled to see the baby and thrilled to see Martha. So that was all very good. But all the while I was, uh, Martha did the driving and I kept getting a text message from uh, the people who provide my um phone my mobile phone thing saying that i'd exceeded my allowance i'd exceeded my allowance i got four of these and that they were going to charge me a huge amount of money so when i got home i thought oh, i'll sort that out tomorrow i thought no i won't i'll sort it out now i went on the website and i saw that the helpline that was open for another 20 minutes i thought am i gonna do this or shall I wait till the morning when I'm feeling more like it? I thought, no, 20 minutes is going to be long enough. So I phoned the helpline people and spoke to a, just, you know, a, a bloke who was on the other end of the phone. He'd been working all day, so I'm guessing he was pretty fed up that there was one more customer he had to sort out before he got to clock off and go home. It was something like, I don't know, 20 to 9 at night. It was late. Anyway... I got to talk to Jared, who it transpires is a thoroughly lovely person. And I, I think I'm telling you this story because we could have just done the bare bones of sort out a little bit more, um, whatever it is I needed, <laughs> pay a bit more so that I get a bit more coverage. I don't know. I, I don't understand that stuff. But we just got talking and we, we talked right up until he was clocking off. And I got to know about him and he uh, told me about his mum who lives in Spain, who keeps bees. And we had a properly good chat. So, Jared, if you're watching this, leave a comment and, and link me to your mum if she's online anywhere. Because I'd love to say hello to her and say what a lovely son she's got. And I think the sto this story is all about how... If you just relax a bit with this stuff, it wasn't a complaint or anything. It was just the bare sort of bones of a, a transaction that I had to do. But we got to chat and um, he's from Montreal. We chatted about Montreal for a bit 
Uh, we talked about, as, as I say, his mommy lives in Spain, who keeps bees. And we talked about various things, which was really quite interesting. So I'd like to say just, you can turn these utilitarian phone calls into nice chats if you're just prepared to relax a little bit with them. Maybe he was in the right mood. I don't know. But we had a lovely chat, Jared, and I'd like to say hello. Now, it's the 1st of March. And so the, I won't show you them because they're a surprise for the people who are going to get them. But the new zine and the new Last Homely House stories uh, from the Last Homely House kitchen are printed. They're ready. They're sitting in a pile over there. I'm going to stick them in envelopes and send them off tomorrow because tomorrow, Monday, is my shipping day. And this month's zine is my favourite colour. So you might be able to guess what colour that is. Uh, I love it. It's also, there's a section in the zine every month that's called Meet Kate's Mates. And this month, my mate is someone whose products are going to be for sale in the shop soon. So the new website's going well. I'm pleased, very pleased, with the fact that lots of you have popped across there and joined the uh, mailing list, which is just like a stick your email in there and you will get an email. I haven't made it yet, but you'll get an email telling you about the new product that's going to be in the shop that month. It's going to be this person's things. And I think you'll like them because they're beautiful. And, and so pop across to the shop. It's not the shop, it's the website. And the website, and the reason why I love the website that Girl Rita's put together for me is that it's got um, everything in one place. So instead of having to dot around to try and find YouTube and Instagram and Patreon and the shop and all the things that I was interested in sh leading you to in the description box below, you can now find them all in one place. So I'm going to leave you a link to that below and you'll be able to find everything you need. But if you sign up for the newsletter, um, at the end of March, I'm going to do a prize draw from everybody who signed up to the newsletter and it'll be something that we have not yet decided what it's going to be. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this quilt over my shoulder here. It's going to have a very, very yellow backing. I've just ordered the backing. Uh, it's going to be uh, have a very scrappy binding that I've just been making over there now. And it's, I don't need to make it. It's just that sometimes I really like to sew. <laughs> and so that's what that's for. So just before I stop and pop off to edit all of this for you, I'd just like to welcome everybody who's sitting on the sofa. Can you see the end of the sofa? Because I can't. Here's my beautiful lime green velvet sofa with the pink cushions, the patchwork footstools, the endless cups of tea and the biscuits. So if you want to subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment, share. And move along, everybody, and let the new people on. And there's been a few comments from people who've said they'd actually quite like a cat on the sofa. So I'm going to send the cats down for you. And the really marvellous thing about the cats on the sofa is they're all allergy free. So if you've got a cat allergy, you can still have a cat on your knee. I won't mind well behaved dogs. That'll be fine. But no badly behaved dogs, please. And no badly behaved cats, actually. <laughs> so till next time then, which will be about books, probably, because uh, that's what I feel like doing now. And maybe a little bit more about this as well as I carry on with that quilt there. So it's a lovely day. It's very, very windy and blustery and pretty cold, but it's bright, shiny sunshine, which is marvellous for going into spring, isn't it? I hope you're enjoying your day, whatever you're doing. Take care, all of you, and I'll see you next time. I'm going to leave you with some cat outtakes now. Let's try again, shall we?
things I'm trying to really channel here. I'm trying to make videos for the last time in the house. You're not helping. You're just not helping. There's so many lovely places to go to sleep. Please don't sit on what I want to show them. Please don't, Norma, please don't do that. Thank you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, Norma, through. Off you go. Good girl. Come on, off you go. Stay there. No, I don't want your bottom in the camera.